Greetings and welcome aboard the Shadow Star, my flagship, for this Star Trek Online visual review video. Now, if you're actually hunting the stats of this vessel, don't worry, the transporter link is below in the description. If you click on that one, it will take you to the right place. However, if you're here with curiosities about a certain Discovery Era ship's detailings within Star Trek Online, well, whether you're members of the Federation, the Klingon Empire, the Romulan Republic, or the Dominion, all those spies in back, don't think I don't spot you there, damn Talshia. Please, get comfortable, the replicators are active, and allow me to introduce you to the Malachowski class. The ship that blends into the shadows and doesn't really make a big standout for herself, but that's kind of disappointing because probably she should have a bit more attention. She's a good looking ship with some interesting style points. Now, this visual review will take down three main paths. The first path, we'll take a look at customization to see what you can do with her within the game. Second point, we'll take a look at her finer detailing within the demo record and at render scale 2, if not render scale 3, depending on how I feel she looks best. And then finally, we'll take a look at the Vanity Shield options you have for, again, within Star Trek Online. Now with this being said, enough time taken, shall we begin? Well, would you look at that? They finally completed the ship. Also, this guy's a big ass. Hello there. Okay, guys. Let's correct some things here since I just had a server logout. <sighs> the Malachowski. Interesting ship with an interesting place in Star Trek Online. She's been added to the template line or the class line of the light cruiser. Therefore, you can use the Centaur, the Miranda, the Shikai. The Reliant, should you have purchased it, and the Saratoga components with her. Things that I all greatly approve of. Another nice thing to note is that the Reliant and the Clark follow similar design paths too. The Clark feels very big in comparison though, but at the same time small due to the one window lip that you can see there for it. Yet, if you go to the Malachowski, that suddenly explodes up. I would say the Clark is the only one facing this little problem. Might need a little bit of a fixing out. At the same time, I think they were trying to make the Clark feel like it was smaller. Now, the Malachowski itself is quite interestingly designed. As you can see, one deck in the saucer edge. White's been scaled quite well, I would say, with the Miranda, which again is one deck in the Saucer Edge. This can somewhat be seen by the hatch doors on the side of the Miranda. And basically, if you look just carefully enough, you can see, for those wondering about scaling, that as far as Star Trek Online goes, they are literally on point to each other. The main bodies are about the same length. If it wasn't for the nacelles, the Malachowski would probably be the same size. Okay, if you detach the nacelles and went just on the main hull, they would be the same size, roughly. Oops, there's just a bit more space within the Miranda due to the rear of the ship. Then again, this ship has a bit going on for it below. Now, on these notes... Having so many options within the templates, you have a lot of customization options available to the ship. There's a lot of playing about you can do, 
and I would show this, but I found that when you tried to keep the Malachowski aesthetic primarily, she tends not to look so good in combination with other ship components. However, I have also noted that sometimes she can absolutely looks absolutely great just by linking parts. Probably not what a lot of people was expecting from that, but as that part of what made me so happy was to see that you could do this. It looked really good. I know I just insulted the Miranda there, but it's just something I wanted to point out. Also along the lines, we have the Malachowski's window options, including a Malachowski window option, which has round escape pods. Bridge versions, well, you can add any bridge you want to it, so long as you've got the Federation bridges unlocked. And... Wow, okay. Plenty of hole types. First of all, Defiant. Which actually looks really good in the ship. Considering eras, mind you. Discovery Type 1, looking the best. Just saying. Discovery Type 2, which is considered its main. Type 3. Type 4. Type 5. Bad looking itself, is it? And Type 6. Probably my least favourite here. Fleet and Fleet 2. Honestly, I feel like can be given a miss. They look a bit weird on the ship, if I'm honest. Much like the veteran. Might as well be a fleet in itself. You have the Galaxy. Now, this one looks absolutely stunning on the ship. Personally, personally, is again one of the favourites. I also like how the torpedo tubes haven't got that insta glow on them, which is a nice touch. The Intrepid. And he said Voyager. The NX, which again looks quite nice for the ship, but then. You would expect that in my personal opinion, considering eras, NX refit should also therefore look definitely good on the ship, and it does. Again, considering the eras and how close they are to each, to each other. Sovereign. Personally, I get a little bit surprised because of the blue deflector ring. And Sovereign refit. Definitely looks good on the ship. Type Zero, if you really want to have some fun, kind of shows aesthetic differences between Discovery and uh, TOS though, doesn't it? Now I would burst through all of these, but I'll just show you some of the better looking ones. Oops. Type 5 always looks good on the ship, I've noticed. Uh, Type 6 is the tier 5 hole. Type 7, Type 7B, no, Type 7A, yoink. Honestly, I'd give them a pass. Type 8 and Type 8B, motion picture era ones, do actually look relatively good in the ship as well. I would say she's gotten relatively lucky in those areas. Upgrade. Not so keen on. Looks looks like a um, glossy plastic, in my opinion. Overall, plenty of options for the ship, but let's look at her decent detailing now. Okay, so a look at the finer detailing. First things first. What's going on with that void space? You guys can see it, right? The deflector is positioned nicely, you can see straight forwards, it's absolute clear clearance necessary. Interesting to see that there is a observatory room below the deflector. And, well we'll talk about it in a bit, but a nice observation lounge near the registration above. 
It's all nice clearance here, and the, even the registry number looks pretty good. So what is going on with that void space? Why is that necessary? I would have some theories, but everything I've tried to think of why they might make void space there then doesn't make any sense because, like I said, deflector clearance is there. It's not going to affect the sensory array. It's not going to affect shield platform. It's not going to affect the, affect the warp bubble. I can't think of why. I will, however, say that I do think it looks pretty cool. It, 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 it removes having an overly flat surface. So on that count, I like it. And again, you can get a good idea of how many decks there are. Because of where that's positioned, being below the most obvious deck that you can see for the outer ring, that gives it two decks to the ship. This is a quite easy ship to um, estimate the decks on. Because as you look at it, so we know we've got that one that's in the void space. So from the middle down, one, two, there's a third deck and there's just not enough clearance for the lower stuff to have a fourth deck below. On that same practice that you can then take, if we matched up to above, you know that there is at least two decks more in the upper section of the saucer. There is one deck below the bridge and then finally you have the bridge section. This, this ship has seven decks. This ship has seven decks. As far as I'm working it out, at least. Now, there is room to debate that near the back there, where you could possibly say there's an, there are eight decks. But I'm not... I'm not fully certain I'm going to count the... count an eighth deck, just because... I think it's more that there's a corridor that goes into a bit of tech area just for the impulse array and probably certain technologies running down for the actual cells. Now, on similar functions here, since we have been talking about the deflector already, let's, t let's talk about the warp systems. First of all, in warp systems you have to have a good sensory area. Or sent absolutely good sensors. Sensors are important for the ship in more, than, more reasons than just that. But if we take a close look down at the sensor dome, there are two standouts to me. First of all, it's definitely a lot older than what you see on later ships, especially the refit. At the moment, it's got this rectangular platform that has got some armament places on it, a couple of ball turrets. What looks very similar to phasable turrets in single singular placements, four around the actual sensor node and two at the far back. And then the sensor node has got a nice glow to it. There's an interesting window at the front of it, along with the other observation deck that's just below the deflector. And the pinstriping, I would say, works pretty well with the rest of the whole formation that's there. On those same notes, Moving back away from the sensory node, we have what looks like two big hatches. Now, the first place my mind went to for them is that they are holding slightly larger shuttles, more long range shuttles. I'm not going to say runabout because we're far from having highly effective runabouts. TOS achieved it, but I wouldn't be willing to say. Discovery's era has, if they have achieved it, it wouldn't be on a ship like the Malachowski. It would be on a ship like the Namiz. I'll get into why I'm saying that shortly. But we have got two, what appears to be two large bays there. The only other thing I can think of them to be is hatches to release warp cores. But again, I'm not sure why a ship like this would have more than one warp core. I can understand why the clock might have done, high tech and everything, unless this ship is utilising two mini cores. 
on that note, let's go up here. And we've got the interesting hatches. Now, this is where my two mini core theory comes in. So, I've got my belief is speaking of the warp systems, that these are what you're looking at here are part of the engineering bay. And the engineering bay is working across there. The engineering segment, whoops, let's rotate a little bit so you can see this easier what I'm talking about. Ah! Sometimes getting your position is not so easy in demo record. There we go. So my viewpoint is this space here is where you would find the engineering section. And that these two end segments are literally the very edges of it. Then, taking a look at the placement and the way they're latched in there, I would theorize that they can lift and what you'd have is essentially NX class versions of warp cores on both those platforms. Why am I saying this? Because those NX class variant or warp cores are not as powerful as anything you'd find near TOS's period. They're not even close. Now they could have upgraded the tech and got them to work better. But perhaps they are using the NX style of warp core on this ship with two of them as that provides just enough power for the ship of its design, its space frame and its function. But at the same time, is cheap to maintain and cheap to run. I'm saying this on one basis. First of all, if these could lift up and you could release from them or eject out the back of them, that would be amazing. You could also have the same idea that maybe it can lift and the hatches where you see the yellow dots, they move back and it launches the warp cores out of there. But working on an idea of a small warp core on a ship of this size would function very well during the period just because it could be a first test of attempting to use more than one warp core on a ship, which I don't see why they'd have too much issue with that. And it's a versatile design to use it on. It's the smallest ship of the period, keeping in mind that Discovery period ships all seem to be quite large. But this ship is on par with a Miranda in scaling. It also would have followed a very similar function to the Miranda. Now, I don't think it's part of the Miranda's design lineage. Honestly, I believe this could be the evolution. Bearing in mind what they said about the Walker class, I believe this could be the evolution of the Walker class. Walker class is huge, cum encumbering, but it's powerful. And then they evolved it, and you ended up with this. They've shrunk the size down, they might be using two of the same warp cores, or as the um, Walker class, or they could be using miniature versions of the Walker class's warp cores. And then they get this ship that functions, I want to say about the same, but a little bit less long range. I mean, come on, they've got other ships at this period that can do the long range stuff. The Constitution class has come along the run. The Shepper class is a beauty of experimental greatness. I say experimental greatness because I do believe it was a long range vessel designed for exploration, similar to the NX class. Just look at the design lineage. And then, you'd have ships like the Nimitz out there doing their job. The Hoover, that's another one. The Hoover could be out there doing its job. That's a research vessel probably, but... Yeah, I feel like this one was just there to fill in the middle gap between ships like the Hoover, the Shepard, and, and to evolve what they achieved with the Walker. Again, I take this on basic premises because if you look at the design, it is very in tune with the Walker. Nice fins at the back, some kind of hatches or latching points that are near the back of the saucer as well, or the main hole, so I can't really call it a saucer. They've moved the bridge to the top, which I'm going to get into in a second. I do like where the bridge is though. 
but the whole smoothness and lines feels like it's trying to follow similar form factor to the walker. And then you've just got a condensing of the lower hole from the walker and its struts into just this strong mountain point which has nice weapons emplacements and relatively strong and robust nacelles which again I'll get into in a second. Now to the bridge. Bridge is one of my favourite points on this ship. It's, I'm not a military guy, never, I was never in active service for reasons. But, God I wish I joined the RAF. <laughs> but, whenever I look at military ships, military craft, there are certain things that you no will note about them. And for some reason, this ship starts to give me a sense of that. The bridge is very reinforced, very strong, it's prominent. Not really sure if I'm keen on the window, but then again, that's me. I've never been keen on windows on Starship bridges. Not to say that they couldn't put a hatch that raises up during battle situations to protect the glass. Then again, the bla the glass. For those that have a complaint about the glass, I will note for you guys right now, a bit of alpha canon information for you. Glass on these starships are just as strong as the hull is. It's just a transparent version of the material. So if the ship is made of durasteel, then the glass is transparent durasteel. That is literally the difference. It's just as strong, so it isn't actually a weak spot even though I treat it like it is one. But I like how this bridge is clearly, it's got a militaristic thought going on. You've got the command area of the bridge, which is no way on a ship of this size is it going to be that, taking up that whole space that you're seeing there. So you've got a lower, you've got a back section of this bridge that has to fulfill a purpose and considering this is a command ship in game, I feel like that's a good explanation. It could be part of a command point. You get five or six of these ships out there and they utilize and work together with this, or sorry, five or six, five or six similar sized ships out there, but this ship is the one that takes command point over all of them. And the back section, this is where they meet, they discuss, they talk about what's going on, and they give them one command and str strategies from. Then you go all the way to the back and <laughs> A nice little circular room, you got your captain's room. Captain's ready room. Not sure why it's so far away from the bridge, but hey, could happen. Could happen. It's also well protected thanks to those dual ball turrets. Okay, away from that subject, we'll talk about the rear of the ship. Now, I've already noted that I think those two hatches below could be to do with hangar bays. Specifically, I reckon they're only about the same size as those hatches, barely bigger, should I say, and they hold one ship, one relatively large ship. I'm saying this because the size of the hangar on the ship is huge, and though, though this is a small ship, that gives it a lot of carrying capacity as far as hangars go. The evacuation limit of this ship will be tremendous, and I like the design of the impulse array. I also like how they evolved, but this impulse array is just... I'm going to say it's adequate for what you're seeing. It gives a feeling of power and maneuverability to the ship without also making it look too high tech. And being positioned where it is around the hangar just means it follow it gives a nice flow to the ship I'm gonna say. Another nice thing is the fact that this is all attached into what looks like a service lip. I'm not sure what technology would be hitting this lip because it's thanks to seeing the front of the saucer, you know that that bit that's above is nowhere near the same size as what is below. But Sorry, nowhere near the same size as a deck. What do I mean by below? <laughs> nowhere near the same size as a deck, but still, still enough that they could have Jeffrey's tubes, access conduits there. 
final thing to say on this rear part and the hanger is there's a curiosity in my head. Now that all looks functioning, what's below the hangar door there. And I'm half wondering if it's not like a massive hatch door that can lower down. Which would mean there's actually a lot more storage space there than I'd expect. Or, if that is some kind of protective system. But, due to them trying to micro-size the ship so much from possible lineage lines this system kind of got pushed out of the hole and now has to have this special plating around it to protect it and that's why it's sort of a bit stand out from the rest of the hole it's just where my mindset has gone to nacelles time nacelles we're going to talk about nacelles so these are possibly my least favorite but simultaneously my favorite aspect of the ship Oxymoron, yes, there's a reason for it. So, the standard flow of the nacelle is very, very nice. And I do like the fact that it looks alive, so to speak. I'm going to say alive, it looks functional, that's what I mean. On the other side, we have some kind of access node, or... I'm, I'm not even sure what to call that. The first thing that comes to my mind actually is a warp stabilizer, but that would normally be in the middle of the ship, not there. So if anyone wants to give me the theories on what that is, I'm, I'm ready to hear. Move back and you've got vent points, release points. You can see clear little modules where you can tell there's active energy emplacement going on. Move towards the back and it's following a nice flow into these gentle fins. They're not overly proportioned to the rest of the cell. Um, unlike something else, which is kind of what makes me also hate it. But the fins give, an, give a nice flow to it. So that it feels energetic across the top. There's that, there's that gentle energy flow that just... It pops to me, sings to me. Go below in the cell and you've got almost the same story. Some kind of intake. Not sure what it's going to be for. Maybe it's the red matter weapon. Or the red, red mist weapon. I, don't, oh, I forgot what it was called now from Star Trek Next Generation. Yeah. Still that though. Damn Packard. Some random intake and it's it goes back into this nice sort of functioning piece that I do feel like follows the flow of the ship nicely and honestly without the way that vent comes down from the nacelle this whole back bit would not look so good like the back looks absolutely amazing this is my favorite aspect of the ship it's right into that vent of some kind, I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to be because nacelles don't emit thrust, but back into this and it just looks really nice at the back. The only problem I've got though is if you move towards the front of the cell, it doesn't look as nice in its flow and it's because of the vent. So you need the vent to make the back look good but the vent kind of spoils the front. And is that just me? Like, per honestly, I would actually rather take that vent off and just follow the flow that it was already following. I know it's a bit smoother at that point, but you can add, still add in some form what you've got here at the back, just to make it run further towards the front. And it would look just as good to me. The last final thing, it's not really something to comment on overly because it's the same on all disco ships, but those facades. You can tell this is an older ship in the line. Just purely because those, this whole nacelle, especially those facades, scream, I'm at the older end of Discovery nacelle design rather than the newer end. 
I mean, we can see from the cross wheel what the new end looks like. Weapons time! Here we go. First function, torpedoes mounted on the pylons. The pylons aren't narrow, they are very dense, very thick. They can, they can literally be a solid deck in those pylons, which I really appreciate. Follow along that same note, follow it down, torpedo tubes. Oh, that's a good idea. I mean, it's also a bad idea because a couple of good shots to the pylons and you're literally going to blow the pylon off, if not blow out half the pylon by setting off all the torpedoes that will probably be stored in there. But at the same time, that gives those torpedoes a better attack angle. They can It's not much wider, but you can see by coming uh, to the side of the ship, those torpedoes still have a firing arc at... Well, considering if you take that most torpedoes have a firing arc around about 90 degrees like they do in the game, these torpedoes technically can get up to 180. Just because they've got four launchers, two facing at an off by 45 degree angle, and another two launchers on an off by 45 degree angle to the other side. It's a brilliant train of thought. It's excellent because it gives the ship better combat capability. Then, if we go... I'm going to have to uh, somehow go underneath the ship for this. Yoink. Come down here and start looking because it's a little bit hard to see them. There are a lot of weapons points in this ship. A lot of them. Uh, oops, hello. Come down here just a little bit, make this a little bit easier for me. Okay, first of all, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine phaser ball points. Majority of them are dual the dual ball emitters but at the tail of the ship we have two singular emitters that's nine phaser points just below hang on that was what i said wasn't it yeah nine nine totally do my maths up hello they are On the upper side, we again have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventy meter points again, with two singles at the back, and then majority twins near the front. Um, that's a good amount of firepower. That is a good amount of firepower. Keeping that in mind with the fact that you do have two torpedo launchers on the ship, well, two twin torpedo launchers. This is a well-armed ship for her size. I think she's actually about on par with the Constitution in armaments. Which is saying something, considering. I wouldn't want to uh, come across this ship as a Klingon bird of prey. Let's put it that. I mean, yeah, we saw what the Klingon birds of prey were able to do to a Shepherd class, and the Shepherd class is definitely more powerful than this ship. But, I'm just saying, You'd have to think twice before you just directly targeted the ship. It's got firepower for its size. Away from these and getting on to two light subjects before we go off to Vanity. 
The one thing I do want to note, because I loved it on the clock, and I love the fact it's here. There's a great observation lounge there, just, just back from the Red Street. Looks absolutely beautiful, and I am wondering what the other large windows are just below the bridge section is. So I'd love to know what that is. And can we all just please give Cryptic a little bit of credit for having a hatch door, a docking hatch door, Position in such a prominent way that it helps you really see the scaling of this ship. It's such a nice thing they were thought of. It looks good in its position. It looks good and high tech. And for once, it's not blocked by anything. How often do you see these hatch doors and they're literally blocked and you can't actually get to the hatch door in a direct straight line from a docking point? Well, at least we know that the Milachowski can dock with the Milachowski. Okay, guys. Enough time spent here. Let's go take a look at the Vanti Shields. Well, this took me a moment, but isn't this delightful? Well, this took me a moment, but... Let's have a look-see. First of all, we start off... With the Alliance Vanity Shield. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. I, I mean, <laughs> um, okay. I'm not even sure what to say now. Ooh. Well, <laughs> where the registration is under the cell, at least looks interesting. But if, since the registry and the penance is the first thing that pops at me, on the nacelles of all places, we, got, we can't really set up a good thing. Um, I need to go back up to the topic. What the hell? Oh. Uh, oh, oh, oh! Wow, that's amazing what... Some simple depth markings can make a ship look so less flat. Yes, there's depth markings with this one, but it feels flat. Okay, I'll, um, well, that was unexpected for the first one. By all vanity shield, we're going to have to say me. Issue? Now it just looks like a slab of slate. Um. <laughs> well, she looks at least good from the rear. Hmm. I feel like this ship is not going to best bounty be the, uh, the best bounty wise. Well, most of them. Full Vanity Shield. Now that's better. It feels more alive, but it also feels like the paint, the um, registration and name have just been painted onto this flat surface that is hovering over the rest of the um, hull. But maybe I'm just being a little bit subcritical right now. Ooh, the underside, however, does not. It feels a lot better. Not sure what's going on with the impulse reactors, but yeah, that's another thing. Why not? If that red glow was a bit further back towards where that vent is, it would feel like there was some heat or that coming from the vent forwards, but heat coming from the vent. That's my favourite one so far. That is my favourite one so far. Discovery refit. Okay, let's be fair, what was we expecting? We knew because it's a discovery hole, we'd be along the discovery line. It's literally just a redress of its natural hole, isn't it? Much like all the discovery types. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I want to say I appreciate the looks or think it looks bad. But... 
I mean, it's nice if you want a rustic old beaten feel to the ship. A bit weird to say, since that's the refit hole, but okay. Now to feel a whole lot newer, Discovery Vanity Shield. Does anyone see a problem here? I don't know why, but the Discovery Discovery's original hull feels newer than Discovery's refit hull, at least within Star Trek Online. And I'm sure Discover in in Star Trek Discovery Season Three, Discovery's hull went from this sort of creamish colour to a more of a silvery grey rather than a dark brown. But yeah, okay. You watch, we're going to get another Discovery refit hole variant that we can have. That will be the grey type. Okay, Emperor's Vanity Shield. Keeping, keeping the uneven nature there. Yes, Emperor's Vanity Shield for the win! I knew the Terrans were the chosen ones. What? Long live the Empire. <laughs> no, but seriously, long live the Empire. That looks beautiful. The Clary Vanity Shield. Or as Wolf says in one episode, the Fekla. Fekla are mortal enemies of Kalis. No wait, that was Fekla, wasn't it? Is it Fekari, Fekiri and Fekla? I don't remember. I'm not gonna lie, that was one element of Star Trek that I And COSTO did it. I mean, okay, feel of the ship is definitely, it's rusted and worn. Feels like it's been on the planet's surface for a very long time and just been corroding. Ferengi Vanity Shield. I am, um, well, at least the Ferengi are smart and don't let the front of the hole look too flat, even if it does somewhat feel a bit. I do like how the Ferengi have a curvature pattern that goes around the registration. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Can you tell pollen and hay fever up at the moment? Oh! Ouch, my nose! This is exactly what I'd fit to say if this ship suddenly popped in front of me like, Oh, my nose! Sorry, Ferengi, I can't do business with you right now, my nose is hurting. Latinum, what Latinum? I don't have any Latinum, it's fine. Look, look, I'm broke, I'm, I'm going to hell, okay? It's fine, whatever you, whatever you call it. I, yeah, you, you don't want to do business with me. You won't be going to the Great Archive then, or whatever that's called. I forgot what Ferengi religious traditions are called. Oh well. Ooh, Herc Vanity Shield. Now, I'm expecting this one to look somewhat good, actually. Oh, it does. Ooh. A little moth friend hanging up there on my wall. Would you like to come down and see this? This guy's got your wings now for a forward hull. Literally. Reminds you of the wings of a moth. Beautifully so. I also really like the way the impulse engines look. This is a very nice look to the... It's 
Mmm. I'm not sure I'm supposed to like the Herc that much for this kind of reason, but I do. Next up. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Not on this ship. This ship is too much of a flat surface. Kelvin Divergent. Oh, it did exactly what I was expecting. I mean... Credit to having the large panelling, but it's just whitewashed the detail right out of it. And what is going on with the Impulse Engine having the Passard Collectors in it? Cryptic. It, Cryptic was not having a good day when they came up with this vanity shield, were they? Okay, skipping right on, we go to the medical vanity shield. That one actually looks kind of good. I could see this ship, like, warping in. It's your emergency medical frigate coming in to assist. I'd feel pretty safe if it did as well. With all its armaments, it'd be like, oh, well, well. I'm taking aboard that ship and suddenly the, um, Hyrogen attack again. I'm going to be totally fine. They can fight them off. Look at all those weapons. Gets ripped to shreds in 30 seconds by Hyrogen ships. Look at all those weapons. <laughs> Platinum vanity shield. Huh. Okay. That's weird because that's sort of popped for me. Now, I don't know if it's this is just because I've had a thing for this sort of styling anyway. To have a silver black styling with black on certain accent points. But. Right. Yeah, that looks actually really good to me. The only thing I don't like is the fact that. Uh, the front of the ship just looks so damn flat. Underneath is beautiful. But with so little going on at the front of the ship, it's, um, it's my, that's my only gripe and issue. Maybe a black, well, like an emergency, a black stripe going round, just fix that. Something minimal. Section 31, Vanity Shield. Now, when I'm speaking minimal, this might be too minimalistic. Hey, look at all those drone ships it's got mounted up towards the bridge. Isn't that lovely? Well, at least they're all on the saucer. Oh, apparently some on the pylons too. What? Did they dis You're going to disconnect the pylons to launch these buggers, are you? Oh, we're coming under the uh, dock. That was probably not the best move to make. Oh, sorry. Hopefully I've just reminded myself to cut that part out. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So, well, sorry about that if I have forgotten to. Section of 31 Vanity Shield does look quite nice. Uh, yeah, only issue I have with it is... Well, again, too much smoothness. However, there are some nicer details in that because of function of the shield scene, well, the um, hull of a Section 31 ship scene discovery, you could say that there's now a huge area for void spacing. Yeah. Next up, Zenkepi. Huh. Um... Giving a ripple texture to a flat surface. I'm 
actually kind of like it. A little bit disturbed at just how many bridges, sorry, how many decks the ship now has. <laughs> Literally having a hundred, well, not hundred of decks, tens of decks. Suddenly it's gained four or five, yeah, four decks in the outer ring when it's only got one normally. Makes the ship four times bigger, what the hell? This ain't suitable. There's even Dexon in the cells! Zenkefi, what are you on? What am I on? Zutvash Vanity Shield. But I just asked a question a lot of people ask when they watch every one of my videos. What the hell is this guy on? Dude! You love those... Yeah! Silver plates look absolutely epic! Rear bay door looks absolutely epic. No, those silk. Mm. Fuck. Mm. Oh, oh, no. Mm. <sighs> Fuck. Up to now, I've not been particularly fond of the Zatvash Vanity Shield. Right now, Zatvash is my favourite on the ship. I just like the silver grooves and how they pop against the green. And the sort of cream to green works so well on the ship. I mean, it's connecting the right vibes for me as well. It's giving me a sort of Legend of Zelda vibe. Hope you don't mind that one coming across there. Twilight Princess Link with the um, Ocarina of Time's Link Silver Gauntlets on. That looks good. I, I, I could theme a build around that. Time to be assimilated. And we're going to go full assimilation straight out of the back because we can. Because apparently this is what I should do. Okay, so first things first, the bit that attaches to the warp engines actually feels like it's in a good place. Deflector looks good. The assimilation points look really good on this ship. Impulse array, nice. Um, I understand where it's positioned now. Oh, now I know why it was glitched on the Clark class. Just a glitch. We'll get that fixed. Assimilation apparently gives it upgraded torpedo launchers to have four launchers instead of two. What are they firing? Micro photons and quantums now. Next up, we go to Bejor. Uh, wow. I mean, this ship would fit in the Bajoran fleet, let's be fair with that. Hello in my face, you look amazing. If this, is, if this ship walked in with this aesthetic on in the middle of a Bajoran fleet, I would not, the first thing in my head would not be Federation. The first thing in my head would be, ah, oh, look, new Bajoran ship. So yeah, that, that's okay, that one works for me. Counter Command Covariant. <gasps> oh, well, that's nice. Oh, that's ugly. <laughs> Und underneath is over the top. Oh, the upper side of the ship is just the right balance, but underneath, way over the top. It's like someone just exploded a paint bomb right next to it underneath. Delta Alliance in the Matrix. Okay. Everyone by now who's watched enough of my visual reviews knows why I dislike this shield normally. We got a good case here for not disliking it since minimal green glow areas. Um, okay, I kind of approved the green strip lighting that's in these areas. 
Not sure what that is there at the front of the ship near this name, USS Sinin. But I'll have a look. Hey, it's there as well. Why do these look like they're phaser strips? No, you can't just blend a new phaser strip into part of the ship that was already there. No. Yeah, the impulse engine in the back of the cells ruin it. The two random strips that are sitting here underneath USS Sunin, they're fine. The ones by the torpedo launchers can bite a garter. How's that supposed to look? It's supposed to be completely plain. Yep, so it just added... Random randomness in that didn't belong. Let's do something that does belong. Dyson regenerative shields. Ooh. Okay. Too bad about the lighting effect. I'm in the Dyson sphere. How can we have lighting issues in the Dyson sphere? God damn it, cryptic. Uh, devs don't care though. The community managers care because they always have to hear about it. But um, well, the community's team care, but the developers that can just ignore error reports, yeah, they they're gonna ignore it. Do you think I've got a bit of a gripe with certain areas of the cryptic team? Yeah, it's called the upper management, the money hungry buggers, that all they care about is how much money can we make and let's not spend money on fixing things because, um, yeah. Oh, it works to a degree. Iconium resistance, let's get in. <laughs> Do you like my sarcasm as we go to Iconium resistance, the one which I normally have a very disliking of? I say normally. Shit, um, let's, let's just stay looking at this side. Ooh. So, yeah, the, uh... <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, the upper side looks really nice to me. Um, not exactly keen on the upper side of the pylons, but the whole lot other than that, nice. Underside, not entirely sure what's going on in the whole deflector region, deflector sensor node, nameplate region, this whole... Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. I think someone got lazy. Hello, nameplate. Well, registry plate. Next up, we have Lucari. Come on, Tron. Give us a good one. Well, I did say Tron. Give us a good <laughs> He kind of asked for that one. Oh, the impulse reactors look nice. Sorry about my G3 movement. I like the blue glow around the facade collectors as well. For some reason that just looks good to me. We then go on to the Mako. Which looks really bad to me. First time I get to say that as well. That, no, that looks really bad. I mean, of course in the cells and the pylons fine, but for some reason, I don't like the way it looks in the source. The deflector looks interesting. Got a literal gold deflector right now, but hey, we can shoot. No, no, something about this black glow and the mesh going up into the rest of the hole doesn't work for me. I don't like it. I'm definitely going to be alone in that one, aren't I? Right. Nukara, Crystalline. You never miss the podiums out. That's what this ship needed. There we go, that looks epic. Give me a bit more of this from time to time. I'm 
She's a pretty ship with some of these hull types. She's a very pretty ship. Still saying that Vash is my favourite though. Prevailing. Okay, okay. Been a while, but the prevailing looks really damn good. I'm loving the look of the prevailing hole. So I'm not really, I'm not really seeing any negative diamond overlapping, which is one of my key bitter points. Like you've got a bit of plate that's going over the diamonds here, but it's not a diamond overlapping a diamond, so that's fine to me. I might start calling them the rupees. No, actually, this one looks really good to me. Close second to Zat Vash. Close second, I'm actually going to say. So that's rare. Woman in advanced. Not even close to Zat Vash. <laughs> Woman in advanced. You look shit, man. You look shit. You ate the shit, man. You ate the shit. <laughs> I don't know, just be really critical of it now. Why am I speaking in such a high pitched voice? That really doesn't do me any good for my throat either. Temple defense. Eggshells. Not 100% where I was expecting the eggshells or sandpaper patterns to be. Kind of. I call it the eggshells or the sandpaper pan, but it looks more like scales at the moment. Like snake or lizard scales. Rough beaten skin gives it extra defense, maybe. Next up, ooh, Terran Task Force. Could be bad or could be good. Could be good. Could be very, very, very good. Honestly, think I want to see this in more action. But no, Zapfash is still holding that top spot. This one, this one's taken second place, but. I do not want to enter the contested zone, no, thank you. In the meantime, let's take a look. Oh no. To everyone who likes this ship, I'm sorry. Trash can shields, aka green, aka dielectric oscillating. It literally makes the ship look like a piece of trash. Like, it has been constructed out of slap to together plates that may not or may or may not intersect properly maybe leaving massive gaps resulting in many 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 force fields throughout the ship preventing atmospheric leaks green you are the weakest link get lost We like randomly gain an extra shield out of nowhere that I have not touched. I hope I've done them all. We are now on the Gem Hadar. And the Gem Hadar are looking magnificent. Front of the ship, a little bit smooth. Again, but hey ho. Purple. Okay, I'm, I may be playing a bit of favourites with Gemadar a lot because I'm a fan of the colour purple. But believe it or not, not when purple was used in this method, nor is it lavender that I'm a fan of. Okay. Finally, the Riemann Advanced Bullet Type. The Marmite Shields of STO.
second time ever to happen. You love it or you hate it. Or you love it on half the ships and hate it on the other half the ships. But it's always a love-hate relationship, I feel like, with this Vanity Shield. It's like, it's very rarely do you hear someone going, ah, I like it. In this case, I'm a, I kind of don't like it. I don't hate it, but I don't like it. Gonna have to stop calling it the Marmite Vanity Shields at this rate. Still looks its best like this. Just saying. And on that note, and not a bombshell because this is not Top Gear. <laughs> Guys, thank you for watching. Personally speaking, if I was gonna rate the design of this ship, it's. I kind of wish we saw a little bit more of her in Star Trek Discovery because she is a relatively nice design and she's so well armed they could have done something with her something along the lines of if I was to say has a scene with the Crossville class and Crossville class warping in to join two of these and then taking an action against a group of Klingon ships and fighting them off oh no there you go Two, two of these ships, one Shepard, and Discovery just drops into a system because they're being a little bit pushed back. And then the four ships together knock out the Klingons, and they could have had a bit of, why were the Klingons so fixated on this area? Why were they trying so hard to get it? And it would have been a good episode, and you could have had those ships then have to be re-engaged later, and Discovery have to go help them again. A little way to have these ships in multiple times. Well, I say this because this is an actually this is actually a smart and interesting design. And if you flip it upside down, you get a really beautiful looking ship, much like uh, some other ships. But yeah, I do feel like a bit more love could have been shown to it within the show. Cryptic's done a good job with it, so I'll definitely rate rate it highly as far as Cryptic's gone, visually speaking. She oh she she gets. She gets a 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10 for design. So guys. Seriously though. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate you watching all the way to the very end of this video. And taking that time out of your day to do so. If you've enjoyed this video. And do wish to help the channel out. Then please. Please consider hitting that like button. Maybe sharing the video on your favourite social media platforms. That's it. Every bit of that helps with this YouTube algorithm. I do want to note now a massive thank you to my patrons, my donors, and my Twitch subscribers. And on that same note, I will be let I just want to let you guys know that we are likely to be moving from Patreon to YouTube membership since I am now eligible for that. The benefits in that I do just need to sort out on how I'm gonna work it. I don't want to make I don't want to make the uh, donation and support platform like over the top and pricey because I don't believe you need to donate a lot to help a channel out. If you wish to donate as well, the links are in the description. Guys, on that one, if you do donate, no matter how much it is, please leave me a message just to say why you've chosen to donate and who I'm thanking. Because everyone that supports this channel, seriously, you all deserve a massive thank you for your generosity. It means the world. As we bring ourselves back in the dock, if you wish to disembark, then please stay safe and take care of yourselves. And if you're staying a member of the crew, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the, the notification the bell, and welcome aboard the Shadow Star. Until next time, live long and prosper, my friends. Oh, and of course, ciao for now.